All right, hey, so spent a little bit of time in Live Professor today, and uh, I've got a show I'm running tomorrow that isn't terribly complicated, but I wanted to be able to kind of run everything from just my stream deck. Uh, so I'm using Live Professor, sort of like QLab. Uh, you have many of the same features that you do in QLab with uh, building sort of stacks of queues, pre-weights, post-weights, etc., fades. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with queue lists in uh, Live Professor. If you have not played with it already, I highly recommend getting into it. Most of the time I just use it for DSP, so processing audio live. Uh, but that's not what we're doing for this particular gig. This gig, we are using uh, a queue list. So I've got uh, you know next previous go mapped out to my stream deck that is in the front of house rig. It's the Surface Pro 8, uh, which is also going to be running Reaper, doing the recording. Uh, pre and post show playback, all the normal stuff I would do with the front of house, you know, DSP slash laptop. Um, and then our queues are just sending uh, OSC out directly to the X32 console. Very neat. Um, any one of these OSC queues just needs to have an address with an argument. And here's your address, and then there's your parameter. Uh, and then you need a destination, so uh, you come in here, edit destinations, add a destination, tell it where to go. It will send that message to that place. Really, really great stuff. means I can uh, have my snippets all built on my console and have multiple instances of Live Professor that are just sort of referencing that. So if one dies, I can take over on the other one and still not have even a blip, even without additional backup. Um, and then I have, this is a really nice feature. I can't even forget to start my multi-track recording at the top of show. <laughs> and I've also built this into a little script in Reaper um, so that this is the same shortcut that I have a button for on my stream deck, a record button. Um, and it, it uh, sort of mitigates the normal Reaper behavior, which is if you hit the record button in Reaper and then you hit it again, all it does is turn off the recording, but the playhead is still running. And so if you're in a situation where you're live, where you're just looking at your transport going, and you can see that time is going, you may not know that you have accidentally stopped the recording and have lost all of that data. So what I've done is I built this shortcut in Reaper that says, OK, if the playhead is stopped, record. If the playhead is going, do nothing. So you can hit this button one time, it will start the recording and hit it as many times as you want after that and it will never stop the recording accidentally. Really, really great little nuance that has saved my bacon so many times, I can't even tell you. Uh, yeah, so okay, then we've got uh, just some other stuff here. We've just got, you know, again, OSC snippets going to the uh, X32 recalling. Some audio file playback, that's for our dance sections. We've got these markers, again, another Reaper shortcut. So I'm adding markers in Reaper as I'm going along, which makes it really easy just to go back uh, as I am doing post. Or if somebody wants to do a dub or something, we can just sort of quickly find that in Reaper. Uh, and. Uh, that's all fine and well, uh, except that, so I, I can do my previous next go on my stream deck at the front of house position, uh, but I need to be able to wander and still sort of be able to uh, recall stuff on this master playlist. Enter OSC. So in Live Professor, when the bottom of your playlist here, you can set up OSC triggers. So enable OSC triggers. When you do this, this allows you to have direct global control of Live Professor using OSC at whatever your address is. Now on my networks, uh, uh, I have uh, DHCP reservations for my sound gear and my laptops so that I always know what this IP address is going to be so that I can predictably uh, connect things together um, and that is that is true for any of my networks. So my field rig network, my home network, they're all set up to do that. So that I, I the, that IP address always is the right one. We don't have to come back here and sort of troubleshoot that when you're on a different network. That can be very aggravating. The other thing you have to do here is set your input port. This is what OS uh, Live Professor is going to be listening to, and your output port. This is what Live Professor is going to be sending to. 
Um, and then of course here are your local addresses. Live Professor, in addition to outside devices, so say your phone or tablet trying to connect to Live Professor, will be listening on this IP address and this port. And then if you're sending from another uh, device that is a, a piece of software on the same computer, you use the, the 127.0.0.1 and then that port number to send to Live Professor. Uh, Okie doke. So that is, once you've done that, then my professor is listening. It's it's ready to go. And sh we have sort of two different ways that we can get out of there. Um, sort of two different ways that we can trigger cues. Actually, a number of different ways. MIDI works great. So if you have a MIDI controller or if you're running Oscillator and you want to send MIDI messages from Oscillator or something into this, that's great. LTC is great if you're running timecode. Neat stuff, just like uh, just just like QLab. Uh, triggered by OSC. I have not been able to get this to work. It exists. I'm not sure it's fully been implemented. Uh, I, I do sort of have an email into the developer, but I, if I recall correctly, this was sort of experimental, and it doesn't actually matter for my purposes. Okay, so uh, uh, the other thing that we can look at here is, so recursive workflow, oh no, here we go. So OSC control, um, Nikolai, the developer, has sort of created this document that will give you everything you need to know about com uh, commanding Live Professor with OSC. I will make sure that this is linked in the description as well. Uh, and all we're really concerned about for cues is gonna be this guy here. Um, or this guy here. In my case, I'm using this guy here. What we're looking at is, so this is the message, and this is the argument. And this, so this one is the message, and this one has two arguments. Um, I think I know how to do that in Touch OSC. I just need to spend some time doing it, and I haven't had chance to, and I only have one cue list, so bingo bongo, there we go. Get out of here, recursive workflow, oh no! There we go. All right, neato. So, in Touch OSC, I've created some buttons um, that I have set up on my phone, and each one of these buttons, it defaults, the address defaults to name. Um, rather than trying to fight with it and do custom t text strings, I just use the name. So minus the slash, because it adds the slash. I'm gonna call this one Q slash recall. Actually, all of these are Q slash recall, every one of these buttons. And what differentiates them is that, is that floating value, excuse me, that, that, um, that argument that we have attached to it. So otherwise, these are all just the same Q, uh, or command, Q slash recall. So what we have to do then is we have to make sure that these are set to integer so that each one has an integer value of whatever the Q number is that you want to recall. And let me pull up on my phone here. This should be happy and good. Touch OSC. Here we go. So we go pre-show. Yep. O spot. I don't know. Kill Voco Solo stage one and then like beatboxer or something, which is way down there. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so by uh, referencing the integer value, which then is going to be you know 10, I think, for beatboxer, uh, each one of these just gets a number of the queue that you want to recall, and each one of those recalls a queue directly. Very, very useful. Uh, I have also a message into the developer to see if I can get sort of dynamic information back from my professor. So right now, these labels that are showing up here in Touch OSC uh, editor are just ones that I've manually populated. What I would love to be able to do is just send a query to Live Professor and just have it say, oh yeah, this is, this is the information you need. Uh, both for uh, cues in a list for these individual buttons, but then also for currently selected queue and next queue. So that way I can have a previous next and go button and a display that just tells me what, what the, the current status is, much like you would on an ETC ION or something like that. The only other thing I wanted to point out here in getting Live Professor to respond to OSC when using touch OSC and queue lists is that um, make sure you have your triggers not set to any or fall. 
uh, but to rise. And this is important because, uh, and I've only been able to reproduce this a few times, but what I've found is that uh, what happens is that when you have a button that you push, let's see, let's go Psych 2 Dance. All right, so if I, I push my finger down on the button, when I let go, it's also sending a message, if you have any. So when, uh, when you have a touch, you get a message, and when you have a release, you get a message. The problem is, is when you touch, you're sending Q slash recall, and then it's adding the argument, which in our case is an integer. And so it's telling it, okay, Q, recall one, recall. When you let go of your finger, it does not send the argument. And so you're just sending a second Q slash recall, which in my case was causing the playhead to advance. So it would do something like this. Uh, segment two dance, let's do this again. Let's do like, I don't know, segment three stage guitar. All right, so then let's try that again. And then segment three dance. And then when I let go of the button, it was actually doing this. Next, next. Uh, and sort of advancing the playlist, which is bad news. I just want to be able to get, okay, kill host, uh, segment two dance. I don't want that, any of that extra behavior. So super, super important. Make sure you set your trigger to rise so that it only goes when you touch the button and not, uh, not when it releases. Otherwise, you get two messages. Or alternatively, when you release. Um, the problem there in with the release one is I was also experiencing the same behavior where the argument wasn't getting sent, even though it was just the release. I, I, I can't say why it was happening, <laughs> but it was happening. Uh, yeah, so just make sure you pay attention to that when you are setting up your, your Touch OSC document. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Super stoked to be using this out in the field. Um, I'm really anxious to hear back from Nikolai about whether or not I can get this response data into a document uh, because that opens up a whole other host of possibilities. Regardless, uh, this is actually really useful because uh, for the next round, when I have more time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up additional triggers that trigger a second backup machine. Um, and then also have a tone going to the second backup machine that is listening um, so that these audio playback files, for instance, are being played back simultaneously on this other machine. And if the tone ever stops, meaning this guy stops sending data, the other one just takes over, a snapshot is recalled, uh, and then nobody actually hears anything even though the computer crashed. So that's coming soon. Really, really, really excited for that. But uh, yeah, here's, here's step one.